I'm feeling a lack of social connection due to the pandemic, and I'm concerned it will only get worse over the coming months. Social connection is a very important and very significant need that we have. And in moments like this, where it is objectively harder to, to manage in, in most cases, in most circumstances, it's particularly important to appreciate that this is something that doesn't affect everybody equally. And there are some people long before there were any major public health issues who were very lonely and didn't have that social connection. And of course, that maybe has been exasperated now even more. It's even worse now. It's even more challenging because maybe what minimal contact was there isn't there anymore. So that includes conversation. It includes just the presence of being there with another person. It also really includes touch. And touch, you see this particularly, a lot of the research here is in uh, infant development and childhood development and how significant, how important touch is to proper development. It's, it's absolutely crucial. It's a really important thing. Now, there's cultural differences here and uh, it's an interesting area to explore. But the, the, the thing is, we, we need it. We do need a certain amount of contact. And when we don't have that, it is true, we can maybe when we get a bit older, do without it a bit more. But when those needs can't be met, when we can't have contact with other people, that can be a problem. And it's something that we need to factor in. So how do you do it? Well, what's the best way of working with the situation you're in? Well, maybe let's think of it in, in three ways. One is actual physical contact with other people in terms of being present with them, whether there is actually a uh, tactile contact between you or whether it's just being there in the presence of another person or whatever it might mean. So the first thing you're supposed to do here is think, well, what is available there? And to the degree that is available to appreciate it and to get it. So if you're isolating and if there's a bubble of people that you're isolating with, good. Of course, one of the first things you can do is start to appreciate each other. And sometimes that's exactly the opposite of what happens if you are spending a lot of time with people that uh, you maybe haven't chosen to be with, but <laughs> they're just there with you. And that can be strained a little bit. So it's nice to kind of wake up a little bit and actually appreciate those people, even if they are a bit annoying still. Just find that bigger perspective and value them to some degree. So value the people that are there that you can connect with. And also, even if there are are people that you can't be in close contact with for reasons of distancing. Still, when you are out and about, if you're exercising or if you're going shopping or if you're doing things like that, still all of that's important and it's valid. And it's a little bit like nutrition. You know, we might all like to have superfoods and a balanced diet, a healthy meal in front of us. But if you can't quite get the foods and the source of nourishment that you want, you get the next best thing. You get whatever is available. So just consciously spending a bit of time in those environments and feeling a feeling of social connection as you're there. And, you know, obviously you don't be kind of stalking people or lingering too much, but it's more of a kind of a, a state of mind, really, because it's perfectly possible to be there surrounded by other people and actually feeling lonely. Whereas you could be there with other people doing their thing, but kind of feeling a feeling of, a common purpose and a feeling of connection and a feeling of community. You even see this sometimes with expert meditators that go on not just a, a couple of week Vipassana retreat, but go full out and live in a cave for a number of years. And they describe, you know, being there in the cave, not seeing another person month after month, but feeling a deep sense of connection with other people. So that's kind of interesting, you know, so you can do that without people there. You can probably do it with people there to some extent. So just picking up on some of that can be useful. And again, like the nutrition example, just taking it where you can get it within, obviously, the, the boundaries of public safety and wellness and within whatever guidelines are in place. So physically, yes, let's take that contact wherever we can. The other thing to consider here are then virtual forms of connection. So picking up the phone, of course, to those people who we can communicate and connect with. And what may be needed here is 
communication with people who you don't already have contact with. Because it could be that maybe you used to get a certain amount of communication with people physically in person, but maybe you can't meet up with those people anymore, but you still need that stimulation. So of course you could try and connect with them, but maybe they're hopeless on the phone or on videos. So that's created a bit of a, a nutritional want within your system. So sometimes what you're gonna to need to do there is then get that kind of reinforcement from, from some other source. So. The good thing, I suppose, is that there is a lot of good stuff going on online. I mean, you know, this right now is a form of it's a, a form of connection and you know, sense of community and sharing ideas. Uh, there's various meetup groups. There's various online courses and things you can do. You know, ranging from completely free. There's a lot of initiatives at the moment that cost nothing. You know, through to reasonably priced, through to more premium if you're you know re really trying to train in something or to, to achieve something. But from the community perspective, there, there's really a lot going on and this is a really good time to tap into it. And the other interesting thing at the moment, because of various public health restrictions internationally, a lot of supports and resources that you would have had to have been very local to access, now you can actually access from anywhere. So this is often a kind of a problem of localization that happens. If you're the only goth kid in a small rural village, you've got a bit of a problem when it comes to your social life. You know, everybody else maybe is is, is, is doing the opposite. And, and you, you know, how do you connect with other people? So that's kind of been scaled out, I suppose, where we all have our particular ways of being, our particular interests. And it is good to experience people like you as well as people not like you. you know, I think there's a, there's a health to both of it. But of course, there are going to be certain things you're interested in, certain nutritional needs, essentially, that you recognize in your social diet. So as you recognize those, whereas previously you would have maybe had to go to a meetup group that was located in a particular village or a particular city, now you can often connect from different parts of the world and it's a numbers game. It's just much more likely that you'll find the right kinds of people or people with interests that kind of complement your own to some extent if you have billions of people to choose from rather than maybe hundreds if you're in a small local area. So that's a real big advantage. And you know, courses and training, it's, it's a great time for, for this in some ways because although, of course, there can be problems with uh, not being there in person, particularly for certain types of training, it can be tricky. The flip side of that is you can maybe do a course in America or in Australia or in London without needing to go anywhere. That maybe wouldn't have been practical or affordable or you need to take time off work. It would have been really tricky to arrange. So now suddenly, you know, the world has become a little bit more equalized in some respects and we've access to some of that great stuff. So do consider that on the, on the virtual front. What are some of the needs you have and how might you, through remote communication, be able to meet those needs? And um, of course, with friends or family members or anybody who you're close to in your life right now, maintaining some routine of communication can be helpful. Sometimes the problem is we kind of don't know how to structure it. So it can be good to have a bit of a routine, maybe a time when you call or you know some sort of a system that's there. It can be flexible, but just some kind of a thing because otherwise days, weeks, months even go by and you kind of, oh, I didn't make contact. And a lot of the time it's when you reach that point that you feel the need for it. I don't want to say it's already too late, but you certainly could have benefited from it much earlier on rather than just leaving it until it's like drinking, waiting, you're completely dehydrated. You know, it's better to drink a little bit beforehand and to, um, to, to quench that thirst before it's kind of urgent. So something like that, I think, can happen socially. So the other thing you can do is use the good old imagination, the cause and the, uh, the solution to most of the world's problems. And you can use your imagination in that way, which is something like that example of that person meditating in the cave. You don't need to go quite that far. But certainly that sense of feeling, a sense of social connection is very powerful. And it's a, it's a lovely thing to do, just very, very simply sometimes to stop and to just maybe picture some of the people who we're close to but we can't see right now, or even just generally the kinds of people that we'd like to connect a little bit more with. And that might include physical contact, like a good old hug. Uh, 
or whatever it is that our system feels that it needs for its nutrition in that moment and actually just stop and just to imagine that in a very simple way. And just as you're imagining that, to feel your system being nourished, you know, to, to, to feel kind of replenished by that. And is it exactly the same? Maybe not, but it's very, very powerful. Now, that being said, as we've mentioned, there's plenty of people who are in proximity with other people, maybe in physical contact with them, but not feeling a deep sense of connection. So you could, in principle, have no immediate contact, but feel a deep sense of connection. So it's not that the two necessarily align. Again, we'll take what we can get. If there is lots of uh, physical contact available and there's lots of social stuff available in front of you, by all means, tap into it and enjoy it. That will be will be a wise thing to do. Beggars can't be choosers, as they say. So you're probably going to have to you know, improvise or use your imagination a bit. But if you put some of these ingredients together, maybe a little bit of visualization and feeling that connection that you need, maybe a bit of remote connection with people, kind of finding your tribe a little bit and connecting with people, and that, that's beneficial. And then also, of course, any in-person contact that's possible. Maybe give yourself a bit of a hug if you need that physicality as well. Bit of a combination, a bit of a rich combination can make all the difference in the world. And just think about it in your own mind. Imagine two versions of your life, one where you do none of that and one where you do do some of that stuff. You know, you can see that it's probably going to bring you in a, a more useful direction. If you found this valuable, do like, subscribe, and share. And what's your experience? Do you have any questions or topic suggestions? You can contribute in the comments, on social media using hashtag BodyMindSelf, or on JFL.com.